Let's talk about the media because you keep on bringing it up and it's a profession that is discredited today and uh, to the large part, it's seen as a vehicle to manufacture consent of the wrong kind. In your story, journalism is portrayed as it should be, according to me, a vehicle for common good. So where has the financial media gone wrong here? Why would you talk about financial media? I think it's the rest of it, is, which is much worse. I mean, I've been hearing this for such a long time. And I keep saying that why talk about business media where, you know, the pressures are much more. You've been in business journalism. You know that. I mean, you know, do we have a choice about not being accountable? I remember in Times of India, every time somebody wrote a letter, and most of the time it would be big groups like the Tatas and others, it was like you were crucified until you proved yourself innocent beyond any doubt, right? We are the ones who sat and had to give out long explanations for what we did. We moved into a time when they are now controlling the media because their advertising bucks and their sponsorship dictates. And so nothing gets published. I mean, we lived in different times. So today, I think nothing gets published until it's sort of vetted by the marketing and advertising people. I'm not in mainstream media, so I don't know what happens. But even the journalism of courage people had got cold feet, right? I mean, twice in my life, if I've been out on my ass without a job, without knowing where my EMI is going to come from. And it, it's lucky that we are a double income, no kids family. We didn't have to worry about, you know, where the food will come from. But we were in a job which has zero job security. We come from middle class families. We took the risk. I mean, why talk about financial journalism? It's much worse politically, isn't it? And so how many of them have gone and become Rajya Sabha MPs? Is it without compromising? Right. It is the entire media which has got to be questioned. And I feel quite angry about it because today, if there is so much of distrust, all of us idiots who are trying to do journalism, we are constantly, I mean, you're blamed if you write something, you're blamed if you don't write something. I don't even know pe whether people understand how, what is the process, you know, what is the fact checking? What happens when something is wrong? So when you're under pressure, you face defamation cases, you're harassed with them, you're on your own. And all that you have is this constant blame stuff that is happening. It's, I, I blame mainstream media for this. And I blame editors for this and who are kowtowing to politicians. That's where the biggest rot is. It wouldn't have percolated down everywhere if a few more people had spine. I mean, you'd, let me talk about one thing if you have a minute. But mm -hmm. when Harshad Mehta was making his comeback, when he wanted a column in Times of India, I remember saying, I'm going to resign, but I went on one month's leave because I needed a little time to find another job. We had an HK Dua who managed to convince the gents that it's the wrong thing to do. Mm -hmm. Go and take a look at how many editors were carrying his column. The Consumer Education and Research Center wrote to the Press Council of India and, you know, some of these papers have defended it, saying that he was an expert. And I remember Manubhai Shah, who used to be the managing trustee of CRC, writing to them saying that, would you say then a serial killer is an expert because he knows how to murder and you will call him to write on murder? Mm -hmm. I mean, we have all failed, right? 